Thank you very much. I'm a designer, and I'm an entrepreneur from Munich in Germany. And my job is actually quite amazing because I get to help young companies and entrepreneurs build their brands. That means I help them improve their communication to reach their clients better and make more out of their business than just a business. How do I do it? I believe in two things in doing so. The first thing that I believe in is that everybody has the power to change the world. Every human being has it. It is in our genes. It is our bio biology. It is this skill that made the human race so successful on this planet, and it's the source of our creativity and the solutions we come up with. It is simply the power to create something that creates value for others and to give something to others. And it doesn't matter, in my opinion, if you have an impact on the life of one person or a million of people. It's all the same skill that you are using, and it has an impact that can literally change the world. It's just a matter of scale. And in order to get the scale, you need to believe in yourself and in your ability. The second thing that I believe is that you have to find your own way to do it. You cannot follow the way that everybody else does it. You don't have to look at the best practices and the strategies that everybody else does it. You have to find your own way, your own voice, your own, your own meanings that aligned with your belief and with what you want to achieve in the world. And as we are all entrepreneurs in this room, I believe that we all know these two facts and we believe in them. And every time we have a new idea for our business or a new business idea, we have a vision that we want to change something and that we want to make the world a better place. Maybe in a little way, maybe in a big way. But what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is usually write a business plan. It's a detailed document of 30, 40 pages where we have all the financial numbers, the figures, the strategies, the tactics. We have it all down for the next five years, how it's all going to work out and it's all going to be a great thing. And maybe we get an investor who believes us and who gives us the money to get started. But the problem with the traditional business plan is that it is actually outdated the, way, the day we get started. Just because at this very moment, reality kicks in and things go a little bit different than they are planned in the first place. So what do we need? I think we need some smaller tools a beautiful, small, aligned tool that will help us keep focus on what really matters in our daily de decisions in order to make better decisions for our business. So this is my reason why I designed the Beer Coaster business plan. And as you can see here, it actually fits on a beer coaster. How does it work? Well, as a designer, I use my graphic design skills to make it work. And if you think about it, it's actually quite easy. A business model is not very complicated. It starts with your offer. Because every company in the world knows what it has, what it has to offer. You know your products, you know your services, and I'm pretty sure you have lots of them, not just a single one. And here comes the first problem. In order to work with the Beer Coaster business plan, you have to choose, you have to focus on the one solution that you offer that is the most important for your business, the most important where you want to be recognized for and which will be your signature product or your signature service. And this choice can be a really hard one. If you have a larger company and you have the means to support several main products, well, use several business plans. But on each, only use one offer. And when you think about it, Think about it in a specific way. Don't just write, a, I'm a web designer, I do web design of all kinds. You have to write, I'm a web designer, I do online shops that have really high conversion rates. That would be a specific offer that would be really valuable to a certain kind of client. And speaking of the client, we get to the next page of the business plan. The customer, who is on the other side, opposite to your offer. 
when you have a good specific offer, it's already quite clear who the customer might be. And you might specify him a little bit more because there might be several target groups that you have. But again, focus on one that really has the most value from your offer, and that will be your best pick. And you have such a beautiful combination that there is a strong value proposition in the middle. Again, the value proposition can be many kind. For the web designer, it could be, I want to grow my business online. I want to reach new clients. I want to give additional services to my existing clients and offer more convenience. Find out what your client really wants and write the most important value proposition in the middle so you will have a strong message for your marketing, a message that will really resonate with a client and really generate, the, get their interest and get their attention. And as you can see, we already have the positioning of your company, and there's still space on the Beer Coaster business plan. So what goes on top? I already said it. Of course, there must be some marketing to have access to your market. And on the other way, it goes the other way as well, because the client needs access to your product as well. So with marketing, again, focus on your most important strategy. There's so many marketing channels that you could use that you can actually get a headache from them, and you will never know which channel actually works for you if you try to make them all work. Focus on one and make it work first, and you will see that you can measure the results and see if this is really the best pick for your strategy. And if it's not, you can change this strategy. I mean, it's a really small business plan. It's not like you have to change a 30-page document. And on the other side, thinking about the delivery, again, there's a lot of creativity you can put in it. It could be an online service, an offline service, huge bulk packages, tiny doses in which you sell your product. There's all kinds of things that you can do. And you should make good use of them, because if you have a really interesting way to deliver your product, it can really enhance your offer and make your offer more valuable for the client. And I already said it, the word value is, of course, the word that needs to go on the bottom of the business plan. You want to generate value so you can get paid a good price for your offer. And if you have a really superior offer, your ideal client should be willing to pay a premium price because he gets a really high benefit from it. What could be a benefit? A benefit could be you build a website that will increase the client's revenue by 10%. That would be a really easy and great benefit because it has a measurable value and you can price accordingly. Unfortunately, a lot of times, it's not so easy. And even if you're in the B2B world, it's not easy as well because there's always an emotional component to your offer as well. For example, how much is it worth to be ahead of your competition, to have the feeling to be ahead? I don't know. It depends on the client. So I hope you have a good idea who your customer is. If you don't, you will not know either, and you will do your pricing wrong. Another example, what about a terrible back pain? I don't have one at the moment, fortunately, but what if you have one and someone can give you a quick relief? Wouldn't that be really worth a good price? Or another personal experience from mine, what is a really beautiful wedding dress worth in which your spouse will look really wonderful and you will remember that image for the rest of your life? In fact, when I was getting married, my wife and I were looking at wedding dresses, and we found one that we really liked and that cost 2,500 euros. And I was going like, oh my god, 2,500 euros? Are they crazy? And she was like, yeah, that's a fair price. And actually, when she found a dress in the end that really looked fantastic in her and suited her so well, that only cost half the price. She had a little bit the feeling that she was getting something that was a little cheap. 
So you don't want to do your pricing too low when you have your ideal customer and your ideal product for him. Well, that's it. That's your business model on one side of the business plan. But in fact, a beer coaster always has two sides. So what goes on the other side? Well, actually, there's only one question on the other side, and it brings me back to the start of my talk. The question on this side is, what is your vision? How do you want to change the world? What difference do you want to make? What is the ideal that you work for? If you get that question right, you get more than just a business because you can create a deeper connection with your clients. And this connection will really grow your business on a completely different level. This is how brands are actually able to inspire people and why people have loyalty to certain brands and other businesses are just exchangeable. So this is it. We have some copies here. I think Dirk wanted to make sure that you get them. And in case you don't, you can as well download them from my website on startworks.de/beer. I've created a landing page where you can simply download the PDF in English or German language with one click. There's no registration or other nonsense um, that stops you from doing it. And I wish you good luck. I wish you all the best for your plans. And I will be excited to see how you are going to change the world. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you later.